The Starfield Outpost system is not just about territorial expansion, it's a living, breathing ecosystem where you will be building a galactic empire. With the outposts you're creating serving as a crucial hub for resource extraction, research facilities, trade routes and more, becoming vital links in your quest for supremacy among the stars. Today we're going to be diving headfirst into the mechanic and answering your question on how do I get started and where do I get started. Let me know in the comments below, is the outpost system something you're looking forward to or is it something you may skip past? Sit back, relax, grab yourself a nice cold drink and buckle in boys because we're going to space. Picking exactly where you want to build your outpost out of the thousands of Starfield locations seems like not an easy task. But when you do find that home away from home, it becomes a very straightforward process. But how do I get started you say? Well by opening up your Starfield scanner, this is going to allow you to place your outpost beacon. This is going to be acting as your main interaction point for your outpost. Now in earlier gameplay footage it did show that the planet was 100% surveyed before they started building the outposts. This could be a key factor but is still yet to be determined. Now the main function of the beacon is to allow you to build your structures. Not only that it also allows you to name your outposts and manage your crew. Yes that is right you can assign your crew members to your outposts to help with its efficiencies but I'll be touching on about that a bit later. Now if you're like me and got sucked into the Fallout 4 settlement building system for hours and hours at a time, I have news for you. Yes, there is going to be another building limit in Starfield. This gauge limit can be found at the bottom left hand side right next to your outpost signal. So just keep an eye on that meter whilst you're building because there's nothing worse being halfway through and you can't build anymore. Now when we start to build our outpost there's a couple of things we can take a look at. On the right hand side we have our list of structures but if we look closer we can see there's a little yellow box underneath a couple. This number is reflecting how many different variants of that one part there is available. As an example we can look at the structure piece hap round. We can see that this is a multiple variant structure and as we click to the next one it changes to the hydroponic hap round allowing you to be able to really add that diversity in your outpost. Now for any of this to become reality we have to take a nice little look up the top left. This is where your build requirements sit. This is the amount of resources you need to build each structure. And if the idea of collecting resources is a daunting task for you, don't worry. The system that they've implemented in Starfield has made it a lot more accessible and a lot more straightforward. And as you can see you don't really need that many resources to create a basic outpost. But what I suggest you do is take a mental note of the commonly recurring resources needed such as aluminium, sealant and lead. This will just allow you to optimize your resource gathering from day one and not putting you in that position where you're scratching your head at the start of outpost building asking yourself where do I get this from? And if you want to know a little bit more about the resources and how to get them check my video link above where I deep dive into it. I'm just putting you ahead of the game. Now the last thing I want to touch on before we move on to how the companions work with your outposts is your outpost stats. This can be found at the bottom right side of your screen and it reflects your cargo, your crew, your needed power, your total power and also your production rate. Because you know, outposts can't run for free. When we're looking at the term cargo, this can be understood as your spare resources or the amount of resources that you have attached to your outpost. You can refer to it as some sort of glorified chest or also resources that you can ship around the settled systems to your other outposts or vendors. Now with outposts comes operating costs which is going to be power and in your stats bar you see needed power and total power. This is very straightforward in the sense of needed power shows you how much power you actually need to be running and the total power is how much power you have in total of your outpost. And for your outpost to be running at the most efficient rate you're going to be wanting your needed power to be at zero. As you take a look to the far right side of the stats bar you can see production per minute. This is going to be showing you how much resource you are creating per minute within your outpost and this is why power efficiency is crucial because not enough power equals drop in production rate and if you're like me who's going to be creating a trade empire I just can't have that. Now assuming production per minute circle navigates into cargo, by this I mean X amount of resources produced is equal to one cargo. Which goes back to those trade links you can create between outposts allowing you to ship its cargo to the next. And when we're looking at crew, well it's just the number of crew you have assigned to that outpost. Which leads me on to the importance of assigning your crew and companions to the outposts and benefiting from the skill sets they each come with. Through your journeys in the settled system you're going 
going to be finding people that you're able to hire, each with their own unique skill set which can relate back to your outposts. Now, when it comes to assigning your companions, by clicking on them it brings up a list of current outposts that are available to be placed in. And if they have any skills associated to the outpost, these will get highlighted once they have been assigned. For instance, here with Huller, once we assign him to the Jemison Outpost 1, you can see that his Outpost Engineering skill then becomes active. Now, Outpost Engineering is just one of the few management skills that you can get from your companions and you can get yourself, as it is a tier 3 skill from the Science Skill Tree. Now, the important thing about this skill is, as it goes up in rank, it's going to allow you to get some of the best Outpost modules possible. And what are modules, you ask? They're simply just the structures that you can add onto your Outpost, and they can be obtained by researching them on the table and also through your outpost engineering skill. And what is even better is the fact that Huller himself has rank 3 in that skill. So not only are you getting an advanced skill for free, but you're also getting a ranked 3 version of it as well. And that is all purely through assigning him to your outpost. And that is not to mention you can have multiple crew assigned to one at a time. And now that's what I call free real estate. And if you're unsure down the line if any of your members have been assigned, you can check in the system on the left hand side there underneath their name. And as you can see, Barrett, Heller and Sarah Morgan are currently not assigned to any outposts. Now I wouldn't suggest that you just randomly place characters on any outpost that you have. The thing that you need to be looking at is the skill set that they come with. For example, when we're looking at Sam, Ko, and Marika Boris, we can see that they're both assigned to a ship. And as we look over to the right hand side to their skills, we can see that they've got their piloting, payloads, and particle beam weapon systems lit up. This is indicating that these skills that they have directly correlate to them being associated to a ship. And this is the same for anyone who is attached to an outpost as well. Another way you can tell if your members are attached to an outpost is in the assignment section in the table. This is going to be showing you where exactly each member has been placed. Another little detail you may notice is the symbol next to the names as well. This is going to be reflecting a companion tear system and showing how good the companion is. For example, as we look at the bottom of the table we can see the security mini bot. Now the symbol it has is a basic circle and a star, showing that this is possibly the lowest rank you can get in a companion. As you can see on the far right it also has no skills to equate. Now as we look up the table to Hala and Marika Boris we can see there's been an addition of wings added to the symbol, showing them as possibly the next rank up from the security mini bot. And as we look at the skills they have on the far right side, you can see it's between two and three, which gives me reason to believe this is how they choose the ranking of the companions. Because as we look at the main story companions, Barrett, Sarah Morgan, and Sam Co, you can see they all come with the maximum amount of allocated skills and also that this symbol also has changed again this time adding another wing and also a bar above the circle, showing that these companions are top tier and also the best to have. To summarize the outpost system, we can see that it is a multi-dimensional mechanic, with effects and bonuses not just coming from the outpost itself, but also from the crew members that you attach to them. And with some of the bonuses that you get when you're attaching your companions to the outposts, you'll be really shooting yourself in the foot by not doing it. This is by far one of the biggest things I'm looking forward to in Starfield, and going to be sinking a stupid amount of hours into it as well. So let me know in the comments below, are you going to be making some sort of trade empire or is it going to be some sort of scenic oasis where you can watch the sunset? And if you made it this far, I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button and give this video a like because there's plenty of more Starfield in the tank. And until the next one, I hope you have a fantastic day. And buckle in boys, because we're going to space.